I'm here with Adam Devine, SVP Marketing for WorkFusion, um, who recently won the Iconics last night for Best Application of AI in Financial Services. Um, Adam, how do, you, how do you feel about winning the award? It was uh, a delight and an honor. You know, we've worked hard to demonstrate the application of our product in every industry, and I think banking has been uh, probably one of our best industries so far. You know, op applications like customer onboarding and uh, trade finance and settlements. You know, there's so many ways that banks can use our product to better serve their customers and lower their costs. So, do you want to start by just telling me a little bit about the product? You know, what makes WorkFusion unique? Sure. So, you know, we're in the RPA and AI space, and what we've done that's unique is combine rules-based automation, so RPA, robotic process automation with machine learning, which is a branch of AI, to automate not just pieces of work, but the entire process. So if you imagine something like invoice handling, RPA is good at pulling data and pushing data into systems once the data is structured, but there's all kinds of mushy, complicated work in between, like reading different formats of invoice. And what our software does that's unique is automate every step along that journey. Sure, sure. So speaking about the product, what do you kind of need to be able to deploy it and get started with it, really? The great thing about the product is that you can deploy it on your own hardware. So if you're running an application like SAP or Oracle or Salesforce, it's no different than that. It doesn't take up any more data. It doesn't take much more infrastructure costs. So it is, we've, we've really brought down the, the cost barrier to businesses deploying AI. So obviously, you know, AI is, is a technical challenge in many ways, but in terms of getting enterprises, staff, and personnel to grips with using it on the day-to-day, -day, what are kind of the, the cultural and organizational challenges there that you encounter? You know, it, it, it's less about cultural and organizational challenges, it's more about the myths, right? Yeah. So there's this misconception right now that you need to be a data scientist, or you need to have hundreds of data scientists to be able to use AI as a business. But uh, these days, all of that data science work, cleansing data, choosing the right model, uh, quality controlling the model, deploying it as automation, all that data science work has been automated now. That's one of the unique things that our product does is it automates the data science work so that business people can use AI as a self-service. So speaking about myths around AI, what what is it about AI right now that's attracting so much hype and so many, also so many misconceptions at the same time? Well, I mean, if you think about every major industrial revolution, like the steam engine, electricity is a great example. When electricity was first invented over the course of 50 years or so, it was all kinds of hype and all kinds of confusion. And, you know, how do we apply it? How do we use it? And if you look from a macro perspective at what's happening right now with AI, it's kind of the same thing as it was back in the 1830s with electricity. You know, people are talking about the use case for AI, but really in 10 years, we're not going to be talking about AI use cases because it's going to permeate business. It's going to fade into ubiquity. AI is truly going to be ubiquitous. But like I said before, the, the big challenge that people misunderstand around AI is that you need data science, that it's super expensive, that the technology is immature. How do I apply it? Where do I apply it? If you're an enterprise business and you've got a lot of really smart people doing repetitive work, like in a back office or middle office operation at a bank, a healthcare company, insurance company, CPG, whatever the industry is, you have an application for AI, specifically for AI-driven RPA. Yeah. So speaking of RPA, what, what is a, for someone who doesn't know, what is AI-driven RPA? Right. So AI essentially is computers or software that learns, right? And RPA is deterministic automation that follows a set of rules to perform a task. When you combine them together, you have the easy applicability of RPA, the framework of a business process and business logic, but you also have the benefit of being able to handle what's called unstructured data. So this is information that comes in the form of, of PDFs, of news feeds, of websites, documents, email messages, chats, and so on. So AI-driven uh, AI driven RPA is intelligent automation that can digitize common business processes. Basically the work that every big company is made up of. Absolutely, so speaking of you know, AI RPA working across lots of different businesses, what are the industry verticals that this is making the biggest impact in? Yeah, so banking, insurance, healthcare, CPG, utilities, energy, um, pharma, you know, all the, all the businesses that run on data, that have a tremendous amount of people and a tremendous amount of data coming in, into the organization in the form of, um, you know, invoices, news feeds, documents, requests, all these kind of things. So would you say 
those, it's those data silos. Are they the key reason why people should be considering using AI and RPA, or what? What, what is the main reason? Data science is nothing new. Like if we think bigger picture, the problem that companies are facing right now is twofold. They are expected to deliver a better customer experience because consumers have kind of grown up on, on, on B2C digital, you know, like Facebook and Google. They've made technology really simple for business, for, for individuals, for consumers. So these are still people that are using enterprise software. There's still people who are engaging with businesses. And they want that same slick digital experience that they have with Facebook with their big bank and their insurance company and their healthcare company. So the first reason why businesses should be using AI-driven RPA is to improve customer experience, to make that back office, the middle office process match that slick front end experience. The second reason is that growth is chained to cost. So if you look at any typical business, costs and uh, revenue are grow growing in a linear fashion. And at worst, the costs are growing faster than the revenue. So if you're the CEO of a company or the COO or like CEO minus one or two, and you want to generate more revenue uh, and improve your margins, deploying AI powered RPA separates the, you know, that, that tight space between your revenue and your costs. And over time, your revenues will go up exponentially because you'll be able to create new business models internally much faster and your costs will start to plateau and go down. So we've spoken a little bit about the quantitative benefits of AI, but what are the qualitative benefits? I mean, a great qualitative benefit, it's also quantitative, but retaining customers. So there's research that shows that if there's only one negative customer experience in banking and insurance, there's a high likelihood that that customer will defect because there's so much competition right now in every service in every service arena. So making your customer hap customers happy with a, a better, faster, uh, more accurate customer experience means keeping your customers. Another great qualitative benefit is making your, your employees happier. So no one went to college and sometimes even graduate school to extract data from a PDF. Yeah. No one went to college to respond to an email. So there's all kinds of kind of lower level human judgment work that AI can automate that people shouldn't be doing. There's a saying that, that we like to use sometimes, which is that our product um, elevates the application of human intelligence by automating the work that should be beneath it. So customers are happier, employees are happier. It's a win for everybody. So, you know, what advice do you give to people starting out on their, this journey then? Yeah. I would say the number one piece of advice I would give to businesses that are starting out on their AI journey is don't do the moon shots first. Don't shoot for the moon. Don't go out and spend 50, 100 million dollars on a, a cloud-based API AI provider. You know the names. Um, it just doesn't make business sense because there's a high likelihood of failure. It's going to take two years to deliver any kind of ROI. Start with the work that makes people yawn. Start with the work that is throughout the organization, you know, customer onboarding and banking, claims handling and insurance, appeals and healthcare, um, intake, uh, employee onboarding, all those kind of bedrock foundational business processes that take up a tremendous amount of time and resources for a business that in some cases may not be competitive differentiators. Get your, your coffer of you know, financial and qualitative wins first by doing that, and then invest in the moonshots. Then go build a brand new business model with the tremendous amount of savings that you've generated and revenue that you've earned by digitizing your operations. So just to kind of wrap up, Adam, I mean, what personally for you, what kind of lessons are you looking to take back from the AI Summit Day for WorkFusion? Well, we want more customers. <laughs> I don't know if that's a lesson, but you know, we're, we're super proud of the product that we've built. We have uh, an incredible roster of Fortune 1000 companies that have drawn, done tremendous things with our, our product, and we want to get the word out. I, th I think if I were to truly answer your question, the, the lesson that I've learned is that there are kind of two camps at this conference. There are the folks who um, are thinking 10 years down the li line, like all the crazy imaginative things that are going to happen. Like, for instance, Mike Duke, who's brilliant. Uh, he's uh, the SVP chief uh, innovation architect for Wells Fargo. He was talking about how autonomous cars are going to have checking accounts. Yeah. And even as you say that, you understand exactly why they would have a checking account. So I think Wells Fargo is doing an amazing job of thinking far ahead. The other camp are businesses and people that are looking at the challenges of AI. And what's interesting for us is that we kind of sit right there in between. We solve those challenges of AI. It isn't expensive, it's easy to use, the technology is mature, anyone can use it, these kind of misconceptions, but we're also thinking ahead to how our product is gonna evolve over the next you know, five, 10 years. 
But there aren't that many people that are talking about the here and now practical application of, of AI, and that's what we're in business to do. I'm Devine, thank you very much. My pleasure, thanks for having me.